Hello there, welcome to Inquiry Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with today's fountain pen review, this Eureka fountain pen. I was contacted by email by a representative of Eureka Fountain Pens asking if I'd be interested in reviewing their new fountain pen made of a very interesting material called PEEK, PEEK, P-E-E-K, which stands for polyether ether ketone, is a high heat resistant thermoplastic used for aerospace, automotive, and medical implant applications. I don't know, Peter. Lips are one thing, but did you have to buy breast implants for Chris? Yeah, it makes him happy. Hey, these are cool! Calling it plastic is totally misleading. Perhaps calling Peak the stainless steel of thermoplastics might be more descriptive. It's hydrophobic, doesn't mean it's afraid of water, <laughs> but it resists water or repels water, hence its application in medical implants. I don't know of another pen manufacturer that has used peak as a pen material. The pen is obviously turned out of a solid rod of this peak material and is machined with incredible precision. Not only that, it sports a hand-tuned Bach number no. 6 size steel nib, all for 50 bucks. I'm shocked by the quality and low price of this South Korean built fountain pen. I'm not shocked that they've sold out. I contacted them and asked them about a timeline for restocking. I was told that unfortunately the restocking will take longer than expected. So bookmark their website and check in often because this is an amazing bargain for an excellent fountain pen. Let's take a look at it right now. I will show the parts and features of this pen, show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. And then I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. The pen is a good size and ultra smooth to the touch. I have to do a close up here to show you this peak material and how fine, I don't even think you'll be able to see the turning texture on it on video, but it's very, very fine. And smooth and here it is with a Mont Blanc 149 to give you an idea of the size of this pen it's fairly large from the top we see a domed finial and then the cap curves up and then is straight to an almost seamless transition to the barrel which is straight until about here where it tapers down to a matching end domed finial there's no clip or any hardware in fact the nib is the only piece of metal on this pen and the pen is very light at only 25 grams in total. The cap unscrews with two full rotations and those threads are the smoothest and silkiest I think I've ever felt on a plastic threaded pen. The machining of these threads is just incredibly precise. And let me knock these parts together to give you a feel of this peak material. It's almost crystalline in feel and tone when you tap it. So it's a very rigid material. I don't expect this is going to scuff or scar very much like ordinary plastic does. And here is the tapering section, which has a flared step towards the number six size steel Bach medium nib and black plastic feed. And the section feels very similar to the sections on my Ranga 4C and my Ranga Abimanyu. So if you like those sections, this is very similar. Let's get a closer look at this nib. It is a standard Bach two-tone steel number six with the typical Bach logo, Bach, and no size indication. The nib and feed are part of a nib assembly that unscrews for maintenance or swapping. And the section unscrews, again with those wonderful threads, to reveal the included plastic standard international converter again with no metal parts there's no place for a silicone o-ring here but with a liberal amount of silicone grease you should be able to eyedropper uh, this pen and you'll get about a three milliliter ink supply very large inside the cap shows a step milled into it that meets up with the section to seal the nib from evaporation the cap doesn't post in any functional way but unposted the pen is extremely light and well balanced in the hand at only 18 grams the section is long and smooth and will fit a variety of grip styles and these threads here are very smooth indeed as i mentioned in the introduction the eureka peak fountain pen sells for 50 dollars plus shipping from the eureka fp.com website but it's currently out of stock Keep watching that website for when stocks might appear again. 
I'll keep watch as well and let you all know if they are for sale again. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Eureka Peak fountain pen with a Ranga 4C, a Jinhao X159, a Fullywen 017, and the Lamy Safari rears its ugly head as a scale representation. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. I'm not posting the Eureka because it really doesn't post. The Ranga does post, but you can't really write with it posted. The Jinhao posts very nicely, as does the Safari. And the Fullerwen 017 has a stub nib that is custom ground by Doodlebud himself. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. You see that the Eureka is a good size. It's just about the same size as the Ranga 4C unposted. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this is the Eureka Peak fountain pen and it has a number six size Bach steel medium nib. Let's check the wetness. It's decently wet and it's very smooth with a hint of feedback. Now the Eureka website says that they tune each of these Bach nibs individually and I know that Doodlebud asked them specifically about the individual tuning and they confirmed that that was indeed the case. And I believe it because this is the smoothest Bach nib I've ever used. And the ink today is also from South Korea. I've been in contact several times with a gentleman from South Korea named Kong Soon Tae, who makes his own inks. He has sent me several inks in black, blue, red, and this lovely turquoise color he calls, sorry, Sky of Spearfish. Whatever you call it, however you spell it, it's a lovely turquoise color. Kong's ink company name is unpronounceable with Western lips and tongue, which is what I'm equipped with, but is spelled, let's get this correctly, J-I-N-C-H, I have to look, E-O-N-G-H-O. -O. Your guess is as good as mine, but this is what the box looks like sky of spearfish and it has german english and a korean on it and this is what the bottle looks like it has a really cool little logo on the top it's a glass bottle 30 milliliters and it has this little angle on it so that you can tilt it to get every last drop of ink out of it very similar to a waterman's uh, 30 milliliter ink bottle. I like it a lot. And I'll put a link to his website where you can purchase this ink very, very inexpensively uh, in the description below. It is a really nice, well-behaved and bright turquoise ink that I like very much indeed. As to line variation on this nib, there's a not a lot to be had there. It's fairly stiff steel nib, which is not unusual. And this nib makes a 0 0.6 millimeter line that is a Western medium surprise surprise or a Japanese medium to broad on my Richard Binder line width chart which you can find linked in the description below and for our quote And for some reverse writing 
is a bit scratchier, a lot thinner, but it's actually not too much drier. Very nice. And some quick writing. No issues at all with that feed keeping up. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Well, I like everything about this fountain pen. Just the Bach nib alone is worth the $50 price tag. But you also get a silky, smooth, well-balanced pen with insanely engineered precision and comfortable in the hand. It's nothing to look at with its plain Jane beige skin, but it's immensely practical. And I bet this peak material will withstand any amount of abuse you subject it to. I'll let you know how it fares as I put it through some torture tests. And if the lack of a clip or a roll stop bothers you, just pick up some cheap costume jewelry on eBay and you've got an instant roll stop and clip. Perhaps with the next batch, Eureka will have different colors of peak from which to choose. Thanks go out to Eureka Fountain Pens for providing this fascinating new material fountain pen for review. Also, thanks go out to Kong for providing some really interesting inks for me to try. The links to Eureka and Kong's inks can be found in the description below. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.